What's up everybody? Hope you all doing well today. We're going to be looking at um, just a real basic introduction to fluids. I'm going to go over some um, terminology and equations for you and then um, we're going to get into much more details in the rest of the unit but I just want a little brief intro for you and one simple example problem. So what exactly is a fluid? Well in simple terms a fluid is something with no fixed shape and you can easily kind of change its um, change its shape. So for example, if I have this liquid here, if I you know tip over this container, the liquid's going to kind of completely change its shape, right? It's going to flow this way. Same thing with the gas. In fact, if I like opened up this container, all the gas would start to escape, right? And it would take on a much bigger shape. Whereas with this solid, you know, the only way I could really change its shape is to really break it apart it's going to maintain this kind of rigid structure here. So liquids and gases are going to be fluids. And in this unit, that's kind of basically what we'll be um, dealing with. One important equation we're going to be using is density. And I know you did this in chemistry a lot, but just a quick reminder. So density is mass divided by volume. Um, so if you imagine, like if you look at a low density, you have maybe a certain amount of mass, certain amount of atoms here. A higher density substance has a much more atoms, many more atoms here in the same amount of space or volume. The units we use, well, our standard units for mass are going to be kilograms. Standard units for volume are going to be meter cubed. So density, therefore, would be kilogram per meter cubed. Now there is another um, unit that we'll use for volume quite often, in fact, and that's the liter. So there is a nice easy conversion for liters to uh, meters cubed, and that's one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters. So, um, so yeah, you have to make those conversions from time to time. Two other very common um, densities we'll be using will be the density of air. Okay, so let's do the row of air is going to be about 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed. And then the other one, of course, would be water. And water's nice, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So notice, just as you might expect, the density of uh, liquids are going to be greater than the density of, um, of gases in general. Um, and so, you know, if this is water, you can see there's a thousand times more mass in the same given volume compared to this, um, like, air. One concept we're going to be using a lot in this unit is that of pressure. So pressure is essentially the, um, the force per unit area that any object, in fact, but specifically fluids, um, exert on something. So, for example, if we have a given area here and there's a bunch of atoms, let's say they're pushing against the surface with a certain force, well, however hard they push against it, that's going to give us our pressure. So the amount of force in newtons over the given area in meters squared, that's going to give us our pressure. So our units for pressure are going to be, well, this, newtons per meter squared. This gets renamed as the Pascal, or PA. Okay. Another common um, unit you'll see is the atmosphere. So one ATM we use, or atmosphere. Let's see, ATM. And that's basically, you know, if you're at sea level, that would be how much pressure the atoms are pushing on you. So let's say here's you at the beach, and the atoms are pushing down on you. Okay, and the pressure they'd be pushing on you is essentially one ATM, or one atmosphere. Now the conversion to Pascal's is one atmosphere is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. So that's the amount of pressure that, um, that the atmosphere would be pushing down on you. So how could we change this force or this pressure? Well, one way would be to simply have, say, more atoms. If we have more atoms pushing against the surface, right, then there's going to exert a greater force overall. Like if each atom, let's say, applies one newton, when if you have a thousand atoms, it's a thousand newtons. 
if you had 100,000 atoms, that'd be 100,000 newtons, right? So more atoms would be exerting more force. Another way would be simply um, if they're moving faster, okay? So if you had faster moving atoms, if you remember like uh, in chemistry you learned is the temperature increases, the speed increases, so if they're moving faster they're going to slam against the surface harder and therefore exert more force and therefore exert a greater pressure. Let's do an example problem. So imagine we have a 50 by 30 by 10 centimeter container. We're going to go ahead and fill it up with water. So it's completely filled. Okay, so we're filling this all up with water here. As such and we want to know what's the pressure that it exerts on the ground here so how much does this um, does this container exert on the ground and we have two configurations so the first one looks like this we're kind of doing a, kind of a wide area on the bottom the second one we kind of have like a smaller area across the bottom um, okay so remember uh, pressure is force over area so the first thing we need to do is find the force, right? So let's find the force. So the force is going to be the weight of this, and we're going to neglect the plastic's weight here, okay? Compared to the water, it's going to be negligible. So how do we find the weight of the water? Well, we know the density of the water is equal to mass over volume. And so our mass, let's get the mass first, then we can find the weight, right? Because the weight is mass times low g. So mass is going to simply be the density times the volume. So we're going to go density is 1,000. This is water. And we'll multiply by the length times the width times the height. Okay, now this is all in centimeters. So we're going to put 0 0.50, 0 0.30, 0 0.10, right, to get us to meters. So we get the mass of this to be... 15 kilograms, which means our weight is going to be 15 times 9.8, gives us uh, 147 newtons. Okay, and so now we're going to go ahead and find the pressure here, and we're going to do it for both configurations. So notice that. Um, the weight's the same for both, right? So it doesn't matter, you know, how you tip it, it's still going to have the same weight. So the force is the same for both. The difference is going to be the area. So in configuration one, we're going to get a force of 147. The area of that one is going to be 50 by 30. So 50 times 30, again, that should be in centimeters, right? So 0.5 or meters, convert that to meters. 0 0.50 times 0 0.30. So for configuration one, let's call this one number one, this one number two. Configuration one, we get 147 divided by 0.3 times 0.5. That is 980 pascals. Okay, we'll do the same for configuration two. This would be 147 divided by, now the area is different, right? So this one is 0 0.1 times 0 0.3. And for configuration 2, you get 4,900 pascals. So notice the pressure, even though the weight's the same, the pressure is greater in this second configuration. Okay, and that's because the area is smaller. As the area decreases, pressure equals F over A, as the area decreases for the same force, the pressure is going to increase here. We're going to talk a lot about that concept over the course of this unit. Now I have one last little concept question for you. What about this? Let's say we take this container, let's say we have a bigger container. In fact, the container is, oops, let's see if I can draw this out, the container is going to be just as high here, right? So this is going to have a total height of 50 centimeters. So in other words, there's going to be a lot more water in this. And my question to you is, how would that change the pressure? 
how would the pressure now compare, let's call this configuration number three, how would P3 compare? So basically it has the same height as configuration two, but then the width down here is gonna be the same as configuration one. So how would the pressure for P3 compare to the other two pressures, P1 and P2? So I'm gonna leave that as a question for you. If you can, see if you can answer it first conceptually. The math should be pretty straightforward, honestly, but see if you can answer it conceptually. Would it be greater than, less than, let's just compare to P2. Greater than, less than, or equal to P2, okay? And then go ahead and calculate it out and see what you get. Either confirm or deny your answer. All right, so I'll ask you about this question in class, or you can leave a comment about what you get below, and I'll see you in the next one.